Hello, my name is Mark Boyer and this is a backup video on my Ticket to Paradise on the grounds that it needs more explain explaining. Um, the reality is, is uh, as I've said in, throughout all of my uh, endeavors, I'm testing oath holders. And I'm here to assure absolutely everyone that everyone who is called Abraham's seed will be saved. Now, there's a, an understand. There, there's people out there who seem to believe the only people who are Abraham's seed are Christians. Okay, and that's dead wrong. Okay, uh, Ab all Abrahamic faiths include uh, Judaism, Christianity, Islamism, uh, Hinduism, and many more. So says the uh, the definition of monotheism. Okay, now the 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 basic belief of Abraham's belief is he upheld God, and for this he was called righteous. And the vast majority of people in this world uphold God. Okay, in other words, they have a sound belief in right and wrong. They try to do it. We all fail, uh, some more than others. And basically, all of those with the mindset of being Abraham's seed will be saved. End of story. Okay. Uh, who's being tested then? At the end time, someone's being tested and that's people who are not of God. Okay? Now, I've said it before, and I'll, and I'll explain it again. In John's Gospel, there Jesus Christ comes to the Pharisees and Sadducees, John 8, and tells them a rip-roaring insult that they are not of God. Their father is a liar, murderer, and a thief. Now the Pharisee, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were are are people who upheld uh, religious beliefs that were founded while in Nineveh. They may have existed in Solomon's time as well, but they were totally reinforced. And basically, it was people who uphold Talmudism. Okay, are the Pharisees and the Sadducees are lawyers, and they both uphold this practice from Nineveh of swearing to God. And exactly as Jesus Christ said, if you swear to God, you are not of God. Now, Jesus Christ explained that someone would call, come and be called the advocate and would explain this. And I've said this more than one time. Oath holders are not of God. Okay? They are being tested, and they must repent or perish. Okay? We're playing out the second commandment, and that's all there is to it. Now, the reality of the second commandment is God promises to punish all those who hate God. And the concept of hate is shun, ignore, have nothing to do with. And that's exactly where oath holders have been taking society for the last 300 years and flat out for the last 120 years under Albert Pike's uh, uh, doctrine of three world wars that he wrote out in the uh, what is it, the Order of the Scottish Rite Freemason uh, Manifesto uh, it, it was demonic now, they hate God. They did it as to Romans 3. Well, what, you know, what if we do evil so that good can result? The reality doesn't say bad. It says evil. And it's justified. Since it's written in the Bible, then it's allowed. That's their attitude. Now, the reality is, is I'm first and foremost to accept that their evil did drive out the new covenant just in time before we self-destruct. And that's the biggest sign that I'm for real. Okay? I really am delivering the message 
that changes everything. The truth that sets us free. And um, we really are, uh, as to the Gospel of Mark, everything ha is playing itself out. Okay, there are people who honestly believe the only thing left are the March of the Four Horsemen of the last apocalypse of Revelation. And if they believe that, fine. Okay, bottom line, if Jesus Christ, if Revelations must be fully completed, then Jesus Christ died for nothing. Because, it, you know, everyone saved in Jesus Christ's version. Okay, that's why he died. So that everyone would be saved. Okay, and I am here to say flat out, all Abraham's seed are saved. Those who obey God and love God. Okay, and there's supposedly a way of how you show your love to God. Well, you show your love to God by upholding God's creation in your heart. And in this way, when the solar flare happens, you will be saved. Now, the reality is, is the law. Those who hold oaths, and especially the law, they, they, you know, they follow uh, Ecclesiastes to a T. And Ecclesiastes is written by Solomon. And it's all about the meaningless of life. Okay? And the whole philosophy that they're following in Ecclesiastes can be summed up in Ecclesiastes 8. Obey the king. King's command. I say because you took an oath before God. Do not be in a hurry to leave the king's presence. Do not stand up to a bad cause. For he will do whatever he pleases. Since a king's word is supreme, who can say to him, What are you doing? Whoever obeys his command will come to no harm. And the wise heart will know the proper time and procedure. Okay? Now the reality is, is the wise heart is supposed to know that the new covenant is being pressed. The wise heart is supposed to see the goodness in the message of upholding God's creation. We really do inherit the earth as sons as soon as we adopt the mindset of upholding God's creation. It's oath holders who are being tested because they are not Abraham's seed. Okay? They follow a, a mindset of what if we do evil so the good can result? And a wise dog will know when to act. And later on in that passage, it excuses everything by saying, you know, a live dog is better than a dead lion. It like basically tells authority to capitulate to whatever lousy rulers and stuff. And but that's what's happening right now. Everyone's abandoned their oath to God as supreme. Why? They're sucking ass on Satan. All rulings are based on admiralty law. And uh, the world's being screwed. And uh, they're being given a call to a banquet. And I, I fear that it's the last call. Okay, that, that's my, my my feeling is it's the last call to a banquet. Okay, and uh, oh, what can I say? Uh, it's front row seat. Everyone has a front row seat. Uh, a solar flare happens, and we all slip into a reality called now. Okay, that is a time called tribulation. That's what the Christians call it. And it's a time of great upheaval. And it'll last for about two days, two and a half days. That, that's a massive solar flare. And the breath of my Lord comes and saves everyone else. Okay. Um, religious leaders need to repent before then. Okay. Matthew, Matthew's version of events clearly says that if the churches don't listen, then I must treat them as pagans. And the reality is, if they can't believe that there's two everythings, then uh, that's the definition of a pagan. Okay, uh, Monotheism is based on the belief that there are two everythings. Everything spiritual and everything of substance. And if they don't wrap their mind around the fact that they have to deliver a message, uh, then uh, 
they find themselves on the wrong side of the divide, and that's all there is to it. Uh, for 90% of the world, it's the most liberating thing that will ever happen in the face of the world. We return to paradise on earth, and it's called Judgment Day. It happens every 7,000 years. This planet has clearly been around for a lot longer than the 6,000 years or so of recorded history here. There's been major, major civilizations, and our civilization is about to be kicked out into the universe as suns. And uh, that's a glorious and great thing. And I sure hope oath holders come along for the ride. Okay? They've set it up for us, and they really are stuck in a powerful delusion sent by God for delighting in wickedness. And just may be saved. But that requires, it says flat out in Romans, okay, that God has condemned us all to a sinful nature in so that he can have save us all. Okay? But that happens when someone places their faith in the messenger and in this way. No one will ever put this messenger to shame. Now, what can I say? Um, this hasn't happened. And uh, it, it's in direct contrast to Isaiah 59 where it says nobody lifts a finger so God acts anyways. And uh, that's in direct contrast with 2 Thessalonians 2 which says that uh, fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs by someone called the Antichrist has to start, and then it happens. You know, uh, what can I say? There are many versions of end-time events, and uh, the world's big enough for all of them to happen. If everything in the Bible must happen, then I guarantee you the world's big enough for all of them to happen. And... The one that people should be steering for is that narrow door. The narrow door that says that, you know, we are all saved. Otherwise, Jesus Christ died for nothing. And uh, uh, what can I say? Uh, time loves the hero, but only time will tell if I'm real. Or a legend from heaven. Or a mouthpiece from hell. That's what, you know, it's a good song. It's appropriate to the thing and uh, the times that we are in, and uh, Shalom. We will meet on the other side. Thank you.